wonderful introduction. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Tanisha. So I'm going to be talking about how we can use quantum computing to solve the world's hardest problems. So if I tell a classical computer to solve this maze, it can do it relatively easily because there's only two pathways it can take. But if I increase the complexity of this maze to something like this, it instantaneously becomes a lot harder to find the optimal solution to get out of this maze. And this becomes an optimization problem because now there's so many more pathways to choose from. An optimization problem is when you, have, you, when you have to find the best solution out of a number of possibilities. And when you increase the number of possibilities to an exponentially large number, it becomes really hard to find your way out of a maze like this. And classic computers just can't do that and break down because when the exponentially large number gets really, really big, it can take the time or the length of the universe to find a solution. So now what can help us solve a problem like this? That's when I realized you can use quantum computing. Quantum computing will enable us to have the computation ability to solve optimization problems like this maze. And to understand how quantum computing works, there's two fundamental key ideas, the quantum mechanics that you need to understand how this technology uses to work. So it uses something called quantum superposition. This is the idea that you can have a qubit, a quantum bit that is in a state between zero and one, whereas classically, you only have bit strings of just zeros and ones. Think of it as a coin that's balancing on its side, and it's neither in a state of heads or tails, but somewhere in between. And what happens now in the superposition state, for example, I am going to go write an X in a book on one of the pages. And in the library where the book is, there's millions of books. And I tell a classical computer to go find that X for me. Now, a classical computer will go through every single page one at a time. And if there's a million books, that can take a really long time. But with a, with a quantum computer, you can have a qubit that's in a superposition state in a space that, could have, that has infinitely many possibilities, be able to go through these pages of every book simultaneously and find this x in a shorter amount of time. This is absolutely insane. Now, the second idea, the, uh, the framework that we need to understand is quantum entanglement. This is the idea that you can have two pieces of matter, such as two electrons, that share this unique connection or correlation between each other. What happens now, going back to my coin example, is that I have two coins that have this entanglement or correlation between each other, and I have one here in Canada and one in Greece. If I were to flip the coin here in Canada and it lands on heads, then I know that the coin in Greece is going to be tails. This is absolutely insane because now we can extrapolate two bits of information just by measuring one bit. So now when you add the, the, this complex system of qubits that are entangled with each other and in a state of superposition, you get that massive amount of computational ability. So as Naveed said, when I wanted to go, I became more passionate about this field and I wanted to learn how I can use quantum computers to actually do useful things, it led me to uh, San Francisco at Rigetti at, their first, at the world's first quantum computing hackathon. And there I was able to work with actual quantum computers and run quantum programs to see it to solve some of these problems. And something that I like, took away from that uh, experience, one, one algorithm that I was, was super interesting was QAOA, or Quantum Approximization Optimization Algorithm. And why this was so interesting is because this algorithm can give us the ability or enable us to reach quantum supremacy. The idea that quantum computers will become a lot faster at solving some of these problems than classical computers. So when I started learning about how this algorithm works and how we can essentially uh, use it to solve some important problems, I got into a lot of math. And, and definitely, it was a higher level and, and um, a little harder to understand. So I decided, why don't I build an actual program that I can help me intuitively understand how this algorithm will essentially work? So what I did was I created a randomized graph uh, with four nodes. And the problem I'm going to talk about is a simple marketing problem. These four nodes are four people in a shopping mall. And 
And what I wanted to do is maximize the probability of these four people buying a certain product at that shopping mall. And the weights, and the weights between them are the different uh, factors that influence their decision making. And the cuts are different subsets of these nodes that influence each other's decision making as well. So the summation of all these biases, weights, and, and, and cuts gives me the cost function or the part that I want to optimize for to find the maximum probability of how to uh, best, the best case scenario of placing these people and being able to maximize the probability of them uh, buying a certain product. And this, put, this gave me a, a, a matrix uh, um, that of zeros and ones, where zeros you had unsatisfied, uh, unsatisfied, uh, unsatisfaction and satisfaction as one. So, this idea kind of falls into the category of quantum machine learning, using quantum computers to run powerful machine learning programs. So after that, if I, after I uh, found the matrix, I was able to use quantum, the computational ability from quantum computers to iterate through every best case scenario, to iterate through every, every case and find the best case scenario. And it was able to give me the best solution of how to place these nodes on a graph to maximize the probability. So a graph I got was something like this, which told me that if you place the nodes in the graph like this, you maximize the probability on their decision making of, trying to, of them buying a certain product. And to understand how the quantum computer went, or how the algorithm went through this, is that through each iteration, it got slowly close, close to the final optimized cost. So what just happened and why was that even important is, I know there was only four nodes, but the idea that I was able to find the maximum, the optimum solution out of this problem using this algorithm and running it on IBM's Qiskit software development tools, which allows me to use quantum uh, computing um, to, uh, to run these algorithms. And this is just four nodes. But imagine I increase this number to 100, 200, 500. This increasingly becomes so much more complex because there's so many factors that affect um, people's decision making. So now, when you try to get a classical computer to do something like that, it will definitely break down because that's just too much uh, co computation that it has to do and it, it can take way too long and it's super inefficient. So now you're able to scale programs using quantum computers and algorithms such as QOA to solve these problems. And the implications for this are huge. Imagine, like we talk about trying to find the cure for cancer, and there's and the, the fundamental idea that we need to realize is we, we need to understand how our genome is based, or how, how, what, how are we coded, our ge a genetic material. And that is a, an intensely large data set as well. So now using quantum computers, we can actually go through these, uh, through, through our genome and this data set and find correlations and find cures to certain diseases, certain genetic diseases, which can be absolutely insane. Another really, really important part is, is we're, we're facing climate change. It's a huge thing that we're facing in our world today. And if we don't find a solution for climate change soon, next 20, 10, 10 20 years, or generations to come, we're putting the sustainability of Earth at risk. And now you can think about there's so many factors that affect our greenhouse gas emissions and, and how we increase the climate change overall. But now you can use something like quantum computers to be able to compute through all these factors and find the best solution for some of these problems. And we can use this program to literally impact so many industries and solve the hardest problems we face today. The, the reason why I'm not, or people aren't doing this right now, is because the hardware still needs to develop. So in the next 10 to 50 years, as qu our quantum be computers become more powerful, we can imagine that this technology, this revolutionary technology, will help us solve the world's hardest problem and change every aspect and every industry. Thank you.